Hey, sixth grade, Ms. Colby here with your practice, um, your help video for practice page 2.7.2. I want you to very carefully read that the directions say, don't forget to convert each mixed number into a fraction before you multiply. So anywhere you see a big whole number in front smushed up right next to a fraction, we have to convert that to an improper fraction. To do that, we are putting in a times between the denominator and the numerator, and then a plus, and then we just work our way right around. So first I see three times one, three times one is three, and then keep going and we get four. So one and one third is really four thirds. The next fraction is a fraction. Do you notice that there's no whole number out in front? So we're just gonna leave it alone. Times three eighths. At this point, you absolutely 100% can multiply across. That's a hint. You're going to see me do something else in just a moment. Looking at the numerators, 4 times 3 is 12. And looking at the denominators, 3 times 8 is 24. So this answer looks like 12 24ths. Or we could solve this a slightly different way. I'm going to move this 12 24ths over to the side so you can still see it there. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a numerator and denominator with a common factor. Here's what I mean. Here's a three on top, and here's a three on the bottom. They have a common factor of three. So what we're going to do is divide them both by their greatest common factor back to unit one. So I'm gonna write divide by three and divide by three. Three divided by three is one. So I'll cross that out and write the number one, cross it out. This is now one. On the bottom, cross it out. This is now one. Now I'm going to look at the other diagonal. It's gotta be a top number and a bottom number. It's gotta be a numerator and a denominator. So there's four and eight. I can divide them both by two, but there is a greater common factor. The biggest, the greatest factor of four is four. So I'm gonna to try to divide by four instead. Divide by four. I could divide 8 by 4. Now I'm going to cross those out as I write down the answer. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I'm going to cross out the 8 and the divide by 4 so I don't get distracted. And in the other one, 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I'm going to cross that out and write 1. There is a lot going on here. You have to ignore all the crossed out parts and rewrite what's not crossed out. So I see the first fraction, which was 4 thirds, is now 1 over 1. So I'm going to write that 1 on top of 1. The second fraction, which was 3 eighths, now is a 1 on top of 2. So I'll write that next. 1 on top of 2, and then keep the times, and now multiply across. 1 times 1 on the top, be careful, don't add, is 1. And for the denominator, 1 times 2, again, be careful, don't add, is 2 which means our answer to this problem really is one half. And I want you to circle it. Looking back at what we had for our original answer, I want you to notice that if you double 12, you get 24, which means another name for 12 24ths is one half. I can divide the numerator by 12 and the denominator by 12. 12 24ths is not a very good sixth grade answer. It's like a fifth grade answer. In sixth grade, we have to be able to simplify to one half. I think the easiest way to do that is through this method. All right, if you wanna see one more example, keep watching. If you think you're ready to try on your own, I'm going to do three and a half times 16 21sts. First, I notice that this number out in front is not a fraction, it's a mixed number. That means I'm gonna put in the times, and the plus, and I'm gonna work my way around. Two times three is six, and then I add one. So again, two times three is six, and then plus one, that's seven, which means the first mixed number is really the fraction seven halves. The next part, the next factor, the next number in our times problem is 16 21sts, but there is no whole number, that's just a fraction. So I'm gonna keep that as 16 21sts. And now I'll write the times in between. Here I could multiply across. 
do you see why it might not be such a great idea to multiply across? I have no idea what 7 times 16 is. Honestly, I can figure it out. I know that 16 times 5 is 80, 16 times 2 is 32, which means 7 times 16 is 112. All right, so that works, all right? But that's a really complicated way to do this. I don't want to do this in a calculator and then have a fraction with 112 on the top. That sounds terrible. So instead, I'm going to look for common factors. One thing I notice right away is prime numbers. They stick out to me. Do you see how seven is prime? That means the only thing we have to try to divide it by is seven. Look at a denominator here of 21. Let's divide them both by seven. Divide by seven, divide by seven. I'm gonna write down the answers. 21 divided by seven is three, and now I'm gonna get rid of that 21 divided by seven so I'm not distracted. For the other red one, seven divided by seven is one, and I'm going to cross out the seven divided by seven so it doesn't distract me. Now let's look at the other diagonal. There's a two and a 16. Yay, two is prime. I love finding prime numbers because I only have to try to divide them by themselves. So let's do it. Two divided by two and 16 divided by two. That totally works. So here we go. Two divided by two is one. Then I cross out the two divided by two so I don't get distracted. And for the other numerator, 16 divided by two is eight. I'm gonna cross out the 16 divided by two. Okay, there's a lot of craziness going on here. So let's look at what we really have left. The first fraction is now a one on top of one. Let's rewrite that. One on top of one. It's kind of a crazy one there. The second fraction is eight on top of three. That's eight thirds, so we'll times, times, eight thirds. This is a lot easier times problem. It's so much easier. On the top, one times eight is eight. And for the denominator, one times three is three. But we can't leave it this way. This is where we need to make eight thirds be a mixed number. There are a variety of ways to do this. We'll look at my favorite way. I'm gonna rewrite it over here, 8 thirds equals. I'm going to have some whole number here, so I'm gonna leave a space for it, and I know the denominator has to be three. The denominator doesn't change, which is changing our perspective or how we're thinking about 8 thirds. I need to get to this number eight. I need to make eight. So I'm going to skip count by three and think how close can I get to eight? I can do three, six, nine. Oh, that's too big. So sometimes kids wanna write a six here, but the problem is if you put in that times, that says three times six and that's 18, that's too big. So instead, how many threes make six? It's two. Now, if we put in the times, can you see that what we really have here is six? We have two times three is six, but we're trying to make eight. So now I have to think six plus something is eight. And when I know what that something is, in this case it's two, then I'm going to rewrite that number as the numerator. The correct answer to this problem is two and two thirds. Three times two is six, six plus two is eight. When you get your final answer, circle. I'm giving you lots of days to practice this. It's gonna take some time. Once you get the patterns and the hang of it, it gets a little easier, right? But it's gonna take some time, give yourself some time to figure this out.